Welcome fall. Today, we will learn about the art of Vincent van Gogh, and then create fall trees using lots of different kinds of vines. I'm excited, so let's get started. First, let's talk about why are trees so special? Well, trees help keep the air we breathe clean and give us the oxygen we need. Trees also lower the temperature, especially on hot days. They absorb heat. Trees provide food and shelter for humans and animals. And trees help clean and filter rainwater for us to drink. Trees are very, very important. Let's take a look at this painting by Vincent van Gogh. Can you spot all the different types of lines he used? I see wavy lines and zigzag lines and dashed lines, even some spiral lines. Think about for a minute, how did he show that it was autumn or fall outside? What kinds of colors did he use to make you think that? And then also, why do you think artists like Van Gogh love to paint trees? Hmm, maybe. I wonder if it's because trees are so special. Van Gogh is a superhero of painting. He created lots of different kinds of tree paintings. This is an example of a real painting I just saw. California. Here are some other tree art by Vincent van Gogh. Can you see how he loved to use all different kinds of lines in his artwork? He is one of my favorite painters. Now, let's see how we can learn to draw fall trees just like Van Gogh did. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to get started drawing our Van Gogh fall tree. As you can see on this side, I have one that I've already drawn using lots of different kinds of lines, wavy lines, spiral lines, dashed lines, dotted lines, all the kinds of lines that we learned how to draw. And I used fall colors on this one. Now you can choose to use fall colors on yours and I'll show you how to do that, but you don't necessarily have to use fall colors. What we want to get started is I want each of you to find a black crayon, if you can find one. If you don't have a black crayon, your next best option would be to use a brown crayon like that. Now the reason why I like to start with black is because you can really see the lines just like we did when we were doing our fish. You're also going to need some crayons and markers if you have them because again we're going to use both just like we did last week. Whenever we start drawing a landscape we start by drawing the line that separates the sky from the ground. This line is called the horizon line. Some of you may remember that from before. My kindergarten friends probably have never heard that. The horizon line is an imaginary line that separates the sky from the ground. Sometimes the horizon line is straight, but I like to give it a little bit of a wavy line because it looks a little more natural than just drawing it straight like that. So the horizon line tells you that all the space above, that is going to be your sky and all the space below that is going to be your ground. So that is the very first line you're going to draw. Now the next line we're going to do is actually a straight line. We're going to start towards the bottom of our paper but not at the very very bottom. So go up just a little bit like an inch and we're going to lightly sketch the shape of the letter Y using a straight line and two diagonal lines. So you're going to draw the shape of a letter capital Y, just like that. Now that right there might just start to look like a tree, but we want to make our tree trunk 
thicker because trees are nice and strong and they need the thickness to carry all the water and nutrients up into the leaves. So the way that we do that is we shade in with our crayon. Now I'm not pushing hard at all, I'm just lightly shading in and I'm making that Y thicker so it looks more like a tree. Just like that. Now that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Alrighty, it's starting to look like a tree. Now here is where we get to using some more of our different kinds of lines. For my branches, you can see that I used spiral lines and I also used wavy lines. Now you can use spiral lines on yours too, so let me show you how to do that. At the end of my Y, I'm going to make a spiral going off in this direction and a spiral going off in that direction. If I want to add some more branches, I can add a wavy line going this way and then maybe a wavy line going that way. And as I add more, you can see my tree gets taller. And sometimes I like to thicken the branches so that they don't look like just little twigs. See that? I'm going to do the same thing on this side because we don't want our tree to be lopsided. We want it to match. So I'm going to go over on this side, do the same kind of thing, make a spiral line on this side, and then make a spiral line on that side. Now again, your tree does not have to look exactly like mine. You can use different kinds of lines, but you want to make those branches really nice and long. Now I'm going to add a few more. Let's do a curved line here, a curved line there, maybe a wavy line here, a wavy line there. And once you feel like you have enough branches and your tree looks pretty tall, then you can stop with your branches. The next part of what we're going to do is we're going to use markers to add detail using different kinds of lines. So I'm going to put my black crayon down. I'm going to think about what kind of colors do I want my tree to have for its leaves? Now, just like with our fish, I suggested using warm colors, like red, yellow, and orange. And if you want to do your fall tree in normal fall colors, you could certainly do that. I will show you how. If I'm doing normal fall colors, I'm gonna make dashes all around my branches. I'm gonna space them out using red everywhere first. I'm going to do half of my tree fall colors and the other half of the tree different colors. You'll see there's my red. Then I'm going to switch and do the same thing with my orange. Lots of dashes. I'm using the thickest part of my marker so my dashes are nice and thick like that. Ooh, that already looks really cool. And some yellow to give it that really nice fall look. And I want to try to fill it in so there's not a bunch of empty space. It's pretty easy to do, making dashes like that. Now this side, just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to use not fall colors. I'll put those fall colors off to the side. I'm going to use some cool colors this time. Let's see. Green blue and violet just for fun so you can see what it looks like using different colors. Same thing, lots of dashes all the way around. You want to add a whole bunch. Maybe you can practice counting by counting to 20. I've got like 20 purple dashes and then maybe I'll add like 15 blue dashes and then maybe 10 green dashes just to fill in all that space. That looks pretty cool already. Okay, next part is we're going to think about in the fall how the leaves like to fall off of the tree. I'm going to make a few leaves falling. So I can do a dotted line or I can do more dashed lines 
And then maybe in a nice little pile of leaves on the ground. And I guess I have to do them in cool colors and warm colors since I did my tree both ways. Make some leaves on the ground over there. That looks pretty cool. Now I'm also going to use green to make some lines for the grass. Now I used kind of like curved dash lines when I did my grass. You can choose to do yours that way, but you can also choose to do yours a different way too. Like you could do zigzag lines for grass. That also works pretty good. Lots of marks, just like that. But we're not done yet. We want to think about the sky. I used a yellow to make a sun with the curved line, but I also added clouds. It's cloudy a lot in fall, so I'm going to use a wavy line. Maybe I want to use a loopy line or a bumpy line to make my clouds like that. You don't have to add clouds, but you can if you like to. And then I'll put a nice little spiral sun in the corner with some wavy lines peeking out. All right, and our last step is adding color with the crayons. That's when you put the markers away, make sure all their caps are on, and you get out your crayons, and we're gonna color our tree trunk in, adding some brown so it really looks like a nice, real tree trunk. You can add some brown on your branches too if you'd like. And then to really fill in our tree, I'm gonna pick a color crayon that matches and I'm gonna color lightly over top of our marker just like we did when we were making our fish to really fill it in and make it look complete. Do the same thing on the opposite side, only this time I'm using green. Remember, you do not have to use the same colors I'm using. You can choose your own. And then the same thing down here at the bottom, I want to take the time to fill in the ground because that's really what's going to make the picture look complete. And if you take your time and do your very, very best on your coloring, you get to show this off to everybody in your family and they are gonna say, wow, that looks amazing. I can't believe you spent all that time on your artwork making it look super artistic. You can even practice mixing some colors. Like if I wanted to make my ground have a little bit of dirt poking through like sometimes happens in the fall. I could add in some brown and mix it with my green. I could even draw some pumpkins down there if I wanted to. And last but not least, coloring our sky. One of the things I teach all of my kindergartners and first graders that it's always important to, when you're doing a landscape, to color your sky. You don't wanna just leave your sky plain white because that's not very interesting with art. With art, you want to add a lot of color. Unless, of course, you were doing like a winter scene and it was really cold outside and you wanted to show like the snow falling. But for this fall day, I have a little bit of sun and the sky is blue. So I'm gonna take the time to very carefully color in my sky. All right. There you have it, two different kinds of fall trees using lots of different kinds of lines. I hope you have fun drawing. Can't wait to see them. See you later. Bye-bye.